Good afternoon and welcome to Staffordshire University Innovation Enterprise and Webinar. Today, I'm very proud to have my co-presenter, Dr. and Associate Professor Mahmoud Satke. My name is Fang Zhao. Sorry, just okay. My name is Fang Zhao, a professor of innovation and strategy and associate dean of research and enterprise at Staffordshire Business School. Today we'll focus on the topic, the COVID-19 in smart cities. What's changed? And uh, we'll I will focus on more about smart city in general terms, and particularly on the policy and strategy issues. Dr. Saki will focus on smart technologies, uh, smart city solutions in you know, different scenarios. If you have any questions, please feel free to use chat function. Uh, we'll have the structure of this seminar will be, I will talk about 20 minutes, and Dr. Seki will talk about another 20 minutes, followed by five minutes Q&A session. All right, uh, let's uh, start it. The outline I would just give very briefly, uh, talk about my research and the research of my team. And also uh, Dr. Mahmoud will uh, introduce his research and his team after my presentation. Um, I will talk about what smart city is, does really mean and a lot of controversies around that. And then we'll talk about focus on the impact of COVID-19 on cities. Of course, the major disruptions and most importantly, the business opportunities that brought forward by this pandemic. At the end of my presentation, I will focus on our research about the smart city failures, what key lessons that is we have learned from it. And uh, Dr. Saki will focus on artificial intelligence and smart cities. All right, uh, Mahmoud. Yeah, so what uh, my team are doing, of course, my team that, um, of course, my research is also uh, reflected in my research uh, team. Um, my previous focus is about a digital government, put it another way, that is e-government, and focus, currently focus on smart city strategy. Look at the strategy issue, how, you know, we, what we could do to help city councillors to develop a long-term strategic urban development plan for the next, not just five years, 30 years, 50 years. And also our team specialized in uh, help business, big or small, um, to materialize their digital transformation strategy. For example, in the investment, uh, in the organizational change, and how are you going to evaluate what happened, what are the effectiveness and efficiency of the smart city investment. And also our team particularly interested in micro and small business. Recently we have delivered a webinars, uh, 10 webinars and 20 business interventions. This project is funded by the government and we called it Survive and Thrive. Professor John Fermo lead this uh, project. So one of the, uh, uh, just a very brief example, one of the work we have helped local business, such as cookery uh, school, um, with developing their, uh, we call it Cook Along on Facebook. That program helped to promote the profile of this business, retain their uh, existing business at the same time, develop uh, their customer base, new customers. Of course, will help um, business to set up their digital startup. That is uh, how to do digital marketing and also how to 
be entrepreneurial in the digital space. Those are the work that uh, our team have been doing. Please feel free to uh, get in touch with me or my or business school. Uh, Seki, Mahmoud, could you turn to the next one? Thank you. Now, let's talk about what is smart city. And before we talk about what is a smart city, we better talk about the why, why we should have a smart city. So the, uh, according to the research uh, and also World Bank data, globally, over 55 of the population lives in urban city areas and contributing to over 80% of GDP. And according to the pre, uh, projection, smart city by 2045, the word urban population will grow 1.5 times, meaning 6 billion people will live in the city. So in order to cope with the rapid growth and urbanization, our city are got to deal with the challenges. For example, energy shortages, economic reconstruction, and other you know, social, cultural issues that is facing the, uh, the society, the, the city, how to best use of the energy that we got efficiently and sustainable, sustainably. And uh, most important of all, how to improve a quality of life in urban area. So that is the background. And now let's look at what is smart city. They, we call it, you know, people, Double it in that way. I know it when I said it. So a lot of confusions, a lot of debates surrounding the smart city. Let's look at the definition made by Smart City Council. It defines a smart city as one that has digital technology embedded across all city functions. There are a lot of versions, a lot of names for smart city. Just look at a few. Digital city, um, intelligent city, or that is the also called virtual city, that is more focused on digital size, smart technology, using digital technology as defining point to define smart city. On the other end, we also say green city, you know, sustainable city. That is another one. And we also say knowledge city, creative city. So uh, overall, recent, pointed out there are four main areas that smart city really mean. One area, of course, that is uh, technology, including technological infrastructure, sport network, a building smart city. And the, another important part is social cultural aspect. That refers to mainly citizen engagement. Another one is a political institutional aspect. That refers to government policy, government support. And the last one, a lot of people say it as quite important, economic business aspect. That means look at the business model as the profitability. So um, that is why it incorporates four elements. Among the four elements, based upon our research, I think smart people top the list. That is most important. Smart people and smart, smart governance that go beyond the technology, go beyond just environment issue. So those are the, uh, what does smart city mean? The current research, you know, look at the downside, the controversy of smart city. So our finding, you know, research over the past decade, research on smart city doubled. And, and also the smart city become multidisciplinary area rather than single aspect. That is a current change about research and the smart city development. Can I please have a next slide, please? Uh, Mahmoud? <laughs> yes, thanks. Um, let's just talk about the more, this is a focus about today. What is the impact of COVID-19? Massive, massive disruption to every industry, every sector. 
So the most obvious one is the global supply chain disruption. That makes us to challenge the you know, popular thinking about globalization. Is it globalization is good? And in such kind of uh, pandemic circumstances, I think people turn to uh, use their, you know, more of a localization, regionalization rather than globalization. And also disruption to uh, education. Look at our university, the primary school, what these mean, you know, things are changing. And also the transportation, look at how many flights were grounded, you know, the huge massive disruption but every disruption has presented the opportunities let's look at the next slides thanks so on cities in terms of city city used to be the driver of the nation the heart but that is changing why is changing the most important phenomena and saint brought forward by COVID-19 is remote working. Okay. So housing market changed. High streets, a lot of become deserted. And e-commerce be booming, online education booming, e-health is thriving. So just give you some of the examples very quickly. The, um, in terms of the uh, remote working, According to some of the research, recent research, from employee perspective, that offers the flexibility. That's the most important thing. Out of almost 3,000 responses uh, to a survey, that is a global workplace survey, 68% of people were saying that is a very successful, successful working from home. And 76% want to continue working from home. So that means that trend will go up. From employ employees' perspective, it saves rental costs, huge overhead costs, and most importantly, the employee are happy and get the same productivity if you're managing well. So remote working changed the property market. In UK, according to Zoopla Rental Market Report in August, there are two obvious two-speed rental market across the UK. Outside London, the rental price jumped 2.2%. On the other end, central and um, inner London, it dropped 1.4%. And in the US, the same trend. Manhattan, more than 15,000 uh, mar rental markets are empty. That it tripled what happened previous year. So all of these are the signal of the, uh, uh, you know, big city people gather together that change to the smaller regional development. As to the transportation, very controversial uh, project, HS2, high speed two project, will continue to go, but I think there will be less traffic coming to the uh, hub of the city, big city more traffic going to the regional city, smaller ones. And the other, uh, you know, uh, more positive part is the green technology and also the environmental uh, people improve the environmental sense. Okay, more care about the environment. Let's look at smart city projects. A lot of projects due to the economic downturn postponed or halted or scaled down but there are some projects that realigned and new projects are also going on. So I'll give you an example of the new uh, project. Just heard the report in London, you know, um, new air quality sensor network were pirated in the, in the middle of the uh, uh, COVID-19. So urban planning, all of this impact have a huge impact on urban planning for the future. That is smart city direction entered into unprecedented, uncharted waters. Can I have next slide, please? Thank you. Now, I think maybe you are more interested to listen to business opportunities. Our numerous research reports have pointed out the same direction 
digitalization accelerated, no matter in the big business or smaller one, and investment increased, particularly in the in following area. For example, in e-health area, advanced contact tracing, e-consultation, you know, smart city platforms, uh, for example, um, in the um, in India, uh, uh, India government use across the several cities use heat maps, aerial surveillance, GPS system, and in Singapore, you know, government use those uh, drones to spray disinfectants and use the robot dogs to alert people to keep some sort of distancing. So a lot of technology, smart technology have been used. And particularly in the data management area, big data analysis, those are the basic infrastructure government have, have been able to put, set aside money to invest in those areas. In terms of small business, e-commerce or big or small, we all know those are the, the trend. Uh, more cater for remote working products and services. IT digital technology area is a focus. Look at Amazon, how many new jobs that have been created. Look at semiconductor, their uh, you know, revenue tripled. Okay. Look at the other related uh, to jobs related to remote working warehouses, community corner shops, okay, the social distancing, you know, those uh, jobs are suddenly new jobs come up, deliver service, uh, accommodate to the uh, uh, remote working. Can I have next last slides, please? Okay, now I just would like to share uh, with you in a couple minutes about the key lessons learned from smart city project failures. Based upon our team's research, um, a lot of lot of uh, smart city projects. We are talking about the big project. For example, the in uh, Canada, maybe some of you have already heard the waterfront uh, project, a uh, waterfront Toronto project. Uh, recently, uh, uh, Google um, wound a, a sidewalk um, a lab withdraw from the. Uh, project. That project is over one billion uh, Canadian dollars project because, you know, from the very start, it caused a lot of uh, backlash from the citizens. Uh, they are worried more about, you know, the, um, the uh, data uh, privacy, uh, cameras and sensors everywhere. Um, and also they were not involved initial design of the project. So this is a, a big um, a problem with smart city, bigger project. No matter it's big or small, citizen, community have to be involved. Okay. So data privacy and equity, particularly in the context of COVID-19, the government, uh, according to some research, which already show that, um, you know, we use this uh, a contact tracing system NHS uh, app, you know, why that is not many people use it? Why is it failed? That's because that we didn't address data privacy uh, issue properly. So just as any IT project, if you don't address those basic issues, you're you doomed to fail. You have to have adoption, citizen, users, put them ahead of the technology. And also a lot of project, you know, uh, that is lack long-term vision and strategic planning. Focus on just one year or six months, very fragmented. So we need an ecosystem, an equal diversity, and have all the actors, uh, no matter public and uh, uh, private, uh, no matter big and small, and society. There are two, three main players in this uh, smart city project, any project. You have a business, you've got to have the government, of course, you've got to have the society by and large. So those three stakeholders, every, everything have to work together, have to have a coordinated system. Bottom up is not enough. We also have to have a strong leadership and a top-down approach. Anyway, what I would like to conclude smart city 
is more than a technology issue, but it doesn't mean that this technology is important. That is very, very important. It is enabler. That is why, you know, uh, Dr. Uh, Seki will talk about artificial intelligence, smart city solutions, those technical issues, and share with you uh, his and his team research. Thank you. Dr. Seki? Yes. Thanks, Fan. Yeah, thanks. So uh, I am Mohammed Sidqi, Associate Professor in Intelligence, Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. I specialize in our School of Digital Technologies and Art. My main research area focusing on artificial intelligence and IoT or Internet of Things. And we mainly focus on to developing and researching biologically inspired computational models for machine learning and the main application targeting smart cities, smart, smart buildings, smart homes. And one of my main focus, research focus is video analytic, where we get the feeds from video cameras and we, we design software to analyze the feeds by detecting moving objects, for example, tracking them, identifying them, and uh, uh, getting classification for their behavior. We have secured a number of research grants from Innovate UK, from Ministry of Defence, Transport for London, London Underground, a number of UK police forces, Future Cities Catapult, and the National Nuclear Laboratory, and so on. So our AI and IoT research group uh, develop mainly machine intelligence to process different types of digital data, including videos, images, audio, text, and so on. And our aim is to create Internet of Things enabling technologies to automate or to infer or to predict activities or behaviors or trends or deviations from normal patterns. And using this inference in order to automate devices or control devices. Artificial intelligence mainly, and we're focusing actually in subcategory of the AI, which is machine learning. So can do a number of things. One of them is classification. So can classify different patterns or clustering, which is without actually knowing about the existence of different classes. If you give it number of data, it can cluster them into multiple classes or regression or prediction or anomaly detection or change detection. So these are the things which we offer ourselves you by building and designing machine learning models to classify patterns, to predict an event, future event, of course, after learning historical data or real-time data, or to cluster again data, or to detect abnormalities or anomalies, or to detect changes from, again, trained data. So artificial intelligence capabilities, it can search for patterns in huge amounts of data that are just too big for humans to analyze them or can, of course, automate repetitive tasks as well and complete them faster than a human operator with a higher degree of accuracy. And it can assist our own decision-making capabilities, which is one of the main things for smart cities application. Artificial intelligence is a big umbrella. Underneath this one, there are a number of research areas. One of them is machine learning. And under machine learning, we have what we call it artificial neural networks. And what is really booming nowadays and for the last actually decade, which has made a huge difference to the application of machine learning in practical scenarios, is what we call it deep learning. So why artificial intelligence can perform? Because of a number of things. The first thing really is data. And and the other thing is the algorithms, which is the academic advances, and the availability of more powerful devices. And this computational power, power being now much more cheaper than before. And as we said at the beginning, the, one of the main drivers of artificial intelligence is data. Especially when we talk about deep learning, which is now the main stream. So this actually hungry for data. And what happened during the last decades? So our data has been exponentially increasing, and this allowed our machine learning models to 
to train on much more data and to be much more effective than before. So when it comes to the application of artificial intelligence in smart cities, there are a number of operational requirements. The first requirement is to have enough data to train our model or models and to have powerful computational power, so correct or uh, available hardware which can support our machine learning models. We have the correct application and the correct definition of these applications which allows machine learning to excel in it and to have the algorithms which allows us to uh, perform the task and plus the money or the capital and the talents and the responsibility. So I want just to take you through a number of these operational requirements. So when it comes to data sources, for example, in smart cities context, uh, context, it is always good to gather data from your city itself. But if this is not possible at the start, you can always rely on other sources like this Kaggle, for example, website, which allows you to actually and uh, generate a number of competitions every year. And one of these, for example, is a competition to gather data sets for COVID-19. But if you check this Kaggle website, you will find a number of competitions, mainly machine learning ones, targeting lots of different application areas. One of them going to be smart cities, and one of them is a challenge of COVID-19. When it comes to the hardware, it is important to get optimized hardware for deep learning models. And this could is possible using what we call a GPU, graphical processing units, and using what we call it FPGA, which is field programmable logic devices or gate arrays, and custom microchips and application specific integrated circuits, or what we call it ASICs, or system on a chip, which is SOC, or digital signal processing or DSP. So nowadays you can find lots of optimized hardware for machine learning models. One of the main manufacturer or provider for these GPUs is NVIDIA. And one of the main actual GPUs model is Tesla and Jetson, which are very useful when it comes to the application of deep learning. So what about the algorithms? The algorithms, most of these algorithms nowadays are open source, which means that you and your business can benefit out of these algorithms directly without the need for you to redevelop or re research these machine learning models. And there are a number of platforms like RapidMiner, which is graphical programming platform, which allows you to make use of uh, the state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms using just drag and dropping blocks. And of course, using your data directly to be introduced to the RapidMiner model. Or Weka, which is machine learning software, or scikit-learn, which is a library which for mainly for Python, or TensorFlow, or Bolt, or Mawa, or MATLAB. All these are platforms which your business can make use of existing state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms for one of the tasks of classification, or clustering, or anomaly detection, or prediction directly. The other option for you could be cloud services like the Microsoft Azure or the IBM Watson or the Google platform, which is a TensorFlow one, or the AWS machine learning cloud services, which all of them offer machine learning models for you or your business to make use of them directly. So what are the application of machine learning in smart cities and related to COVID-19? One of the projects which we initiated recently is the application of AI by using CCTV-based analysis and information solution to measure social distancing and to support the county council short and medium term response to COVID-19 and the wider, which is a longer term management of the city. Our solution provides a classified count and density of pedestrians in a monitoring or a public place, monitoring zone, which is normally a public place and measure for the social distancing between pedestrians. So this is actually a snapshot of our application or our technologies. So you got a city and you can identify objects, cars, human and the like, and you can track these objects and you can localize this object from the camera to convert the location into a GPS location. 
and based on their trajectories and based on their movements and based on the ground distance between uh, each object so could be bikes could be cars could be pedestrian and based on all of these we can apply machine learning for behavior analysis could be one of the application is social distancing or could be the use of bikes for example or exercising or for safety and security application so this to give you an indication of our technologies which you can classify up to 10,000 different objects at the same time so classify pedestrian cars bikes and of course subcategories as well trucks buses and the like and based on this one we can keep tracking identifying the object tracking them measuring the ground distance between them and count the number of pedestrians and maybe the social distancing and the application of this social distancing this is actually cameras from Leicester city and this is our technology applied to the uh, road as you can see counting the number of vehicles classifying them of course and counting the number of bikes and counting the distance ground distance between the objects and the ground speed of these objects providing this information of course to city council officials where they can make use of this information for traffic management and part of the smart city solution this was a project which we proposed to innovate uk in the past we called it smart urban planning analytics or super and as you can see this uh, human brain because our models are inspired from biological systems so these are called biological inspired machine learning models so our actually proposal was to make use of data coming from citizen generated data and from the cctv data center from the historical data from real-time data like for example air quality sensors and other sensors from the city and for us to build a citizen engagement engine to allow the citizen to get some information about his city or her city and to feed some information or some data to the city and we building analytical engine which are machine learning models in order to analyze data coming from different types of sensors and to build what we call adaptive modeling and integration which is algorithms to allow the integration between data coming from different sectors so sectors like transport community well-being public safety environment each of these has got their own sensors and their own data but before smart cities they work in like isolated islands so what we are trying to do here we're trying to model and integrate this data coming from different department city department and trying to uh, allow other departments to access this data and mainly the application to sustainable transport clean environment safe communities and active people and after this adaptive modeling and integration we build a smart interactive planning interface a dashboard with different views views for the city officials view, views for subcontractors view for uh, pedestrian and so on and all of this in order to meet the city council policies and objectives this dashboard allows the simulation of different scenarios and the objectives of the council could be could uh, produce an intervention and this intervention will be measured by all these data and the analytics can measure the effectiveness of this intervention and based on that the plan could be improved as an example of a mini smart city what we built inside our, our university Staffordshire university in our new building the uh, uh, this building which is the uh, beacon building and we got access to the beacon building from different aspects one of them is sensors so environmental sensor occupancy sensors access sensors and to the equipment inside this uh, beacon building including computing facilities air conditioners and teaching facilities and some information about the material consumable and some information about our online services like the uh, usage of the rooms parking and so on and to the social media and what we have been trying to build is machine learning models in order to manage operations manage spaces manage energy and based on that we have been storing all the data coming from all these different sources on a database and then the application of our machine learning models tries to detect changes or detect abnormalities 
or to classify patterns or to predict, predict future events. And based on that, we can control equipment or we can automate the operation of some of these equipment. And we can present all the output of these machine learning models to a dashboard with different views for students, for visitors, for head of schools, for deans, and for executives. One of the examples of this uh, uh, project, which is the space utilization model, for example. So we have been implementing a number of fixed cameras plus embedded systems, Raspberry Pi, small computational power. And we have been applying motion detection using our technology called the Spectrum 360, and then tracking moving objects. And then we would call it directional count, which means to count how many people are entering and exiting a room. And then using camera calibration, we can localize this room, and then we can give information about how many students or guests entering or exiting certain room. And based on that, we can store all of this into a server. And we can, we implemented as well infrared detectors in order to detect the existence of human in a room or an area, corridor, or a building, and then store all these ones and then get this information to automate some uh, equipment, like the, for example, the uh, lighting or others. And we have face cam another camera with a face recognition system in order to get snap face snapshots and in order to help in terms of monitoring the attendance for students automatically. And we have been linking all of these to our to the university databases, including timetable, the attendance, room booking, access control, students' records, logging, boot up, and so on. And based on that, we, up, we provide all this information to machine, the machine learning and trying to detect abnormalities or to predict future events or to classify these into different patterns and send everything to a dashboard, which allows an operator to make use of this information. And this actually to help in terms of student experience, student retention, student attendance, cost saving and business attraction. Another model we built is energy management, which is accessing and implementing number of temperature and humidity indoor sensors, temperature and humidity outdoor sensors from weather stations, and electricity and gas meters readings. And based on that, we can get this information to detect abnormalities or to predict something might happen in the future. And based on that, we can automate again or control different uh, uh, devices or equipment, air conditioners and heaters and the like. So in terms of recommendation from this uh, presentation, so in order to apply machine learning or artificial intelligence to your smart city, you need to exploit all relevant data. You need to collect as much data as possible from your city. And you need to have the correct hardware and enough computational power, so including GPUs, TPUs, and ASICs. And sometimes you might want to include edge processing, which means you need uh, embedded systems connected to the sensor directly and the machine learning to be the, uh, applied on the edge of the network itself. You need to define properly your applications, including the products or the services or internal operations you want machine your, the AI to help you. And you need to identify the correct algorithms. And whenever it comes to algorithms, so you have a number of platforms, we have seen a number of them. So it could be Python, it could be Watson, it could be RapidMiner, and so on. And you need to make sure, like what uh, Professor Fang said, that the responsibility, so ethics, security of the data, empathy, policy, liability, you need to have the experts in terms of data science experts and machine learning experts. So you can have a cloud source for data scientists using a number of ways, one of them Kaggle again, one of them Expertify and others. You need to have the capital, which is small for, to innovate or large to acquire and integrate. And in Staffordshire University, we have a number of projects, EU projects and other projects, which are the STEP, for example, or SM, SAM, PID or SAMAC. All these are projects which help uh, uh, SMEs in order to get access to talents and get access to capital and to allow supervision and recruitment of uh, students and graduates to work on machine learning models. 
We have as well our enterprise zone, which includes incubation center and launch pad. It is funded and support for uh, SMEs. It is access to innovation labs, workshops, facilities, students, graduates, and researchers. New product development, so this allows this innovation zone, allows new product development, prototyping, process innovation, and productivity improvements, and CPD. And digital advanced manufacturing material is part of this enterprise zone. So the key contacts for myself and for uh, Professor Peng Zhu. So these are the key contacts and as well as the enterprise zone. I just wanted to let you know by the end of our presentation that this webinar is recorded and you can access the recording of this webinar on our website www.staffs.ac.uk slash events. Thank you so much. And of course we are open for questions now. Uh, so do you want to answer the first question or do you want me to uh, uh, yeah. I, I got I'm a, a little bit you... uh, blurry here okay yeah let me answer the first, my, my question so uh, yeah. I got yeah. a... Please. The yeah. question is, do you have any thoughts on how to protect concepts like delight surprise and privacy in a world where we are constantly being analyzed actually uh, my uh, my PhD actually a long time ago it was about workplace surveillance. And as the concept of workplace surveillance is actually, uh, everyone looked at it as big brother and so on. So my main work actually was video analytic and the workplace surveillance in terms of how to make use of cameras as sensors, not to allow any operators to look at the camera itself, but allow the software to analyze the behavior as much as possible and with the right definition of the behavior, of course, and to allow what we call it uh, to uh, uh, to measure the effectiveness and the, uh, the effectiveness of the workplace itself. So the use of spaces or use of resources and so on. So it actually these ethics and this uh, in order to protect uh, our privacy, we need to have clear policy about the use of technologies. The good thing that the technology does exist nowadays. So it is not like uh, Professor Frank said as well. It is not a problem of it is not a problem of technology anymore. Actually, it is the problem of defining the use of this technology properly. If you ask myself, I, I, my opinion is we can make use of the technology in the right way by putting the right policy for that. The good thing about this uh, new technology is that most of it doesn't really need operators. Of course, ideally these technologies to work alongside another operator but in lots of cases you can make use of the camera like a sensor without actually storing the actual video so without actually interfering or affecting the privacy of the people under surveillance or what you want just to gather some data about for example social distancing or about the count of the number of people in uh, uh, gathering or in public space for example and so on without really identifying anyone without really affecting the privacy of uh, a pedestrian or people in this public place. So I think there are different ways of doing it and the technology allows us, but it is a matter of putting them into policy and uh, make sure that everything is transparent and clear how these technologies are being used. Thanks, uh, Mohammed. Uh, I think the question to me is about taxation on the changing scenario of you know, uh, rental markets, you know, there are so many empty rental properties there and the taxation, um, you know, officials should consider taking into account the real income that the landlord have received. So this is all about uh, the, you know, the restructuring of the rental markets. So I'm sure 
Um, that's a very good suggestion. And uh, maybe we could, you know, through our network, uh, present this um, easy to the, uh, um, you know, I, I don't know which uh, market you are talking about. Anyway, um, our network with the uh, local governments and also with some city councils, uh, county uh, government raise that issue. So certainly um, the whole COVID-19 scenario disruption make us to rethink about the whole, uh, the traditional system, all of these, you know, business models and taxation, you know, all this need to put under the, uh, uh, should be scrutinized and the system should uh, keep up with the changed markets, the changed business model, etc. Thank you. Any other question? Yeah. Uh, feel free to, um, you know, I have an email account and feel free to get in touch. Uh, and also our research team have a number of uh, research focus, not just smart city, digital transformation is a big thing in every sector, particularly in the uh, uh, university and small business or including micro business. Thank you. So, no more questions? <laughs> All right. Mahamud, do you want to conclude or any questions? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think we got any questions, but yeah, of course, I'm very happy to uh, accept your questions as well. well yeah. And you got my email, and uh, I'm very happy myself and my team to help and of course our innovation enterprise zone as well to be uh, of to make you to be used by uh, your uh, business so we'll be very happy to help you in any way we can yeah thank you thanks everybody thank you stay in touch <laughs>